You might have seen or heard the name Linux in the past, but did you know Linux is the most used operating system in security today? Let's start by taking a look at Linux and how it's used in security. Linux is an open source operating system. It was created in two parts. In the early 1990s, two different people were working separately on projects to improve computer engineering. The first person was Linus Torvalds. At the time, the Unix operating system was already in use. He wanted to improve it and make it open source and accessible to anyone. What was revolutionary was his introduction of the Linux kernel. We're going to learn what the kernel does later. Around the same time, Richard Stallman started working on GNU. GNU was also an operating system based on Unix. Stallman shared Torvald's goal of creating software that was free and open to anyone. After working on GNU for a few years, the missing element for the software was the kernel. Together, Torvald and Stallman's innovations made what is commonly referred to as Linux. Now that you've learned the history behind Linux, let's take a look at what makes Linux unique. As mentioned before, Linux is open source, meaning anyone can have access to the operating system and the source code. Linux and many of the programs that come with Linux are licensed under the terms of the GNU public license, which allow you to use, share, and modify them freely. Thanks to Linux's open source philosophy, as well as its strong feature set, an entire community of developers has adopted this operating system. These developers are able to collaborate on projects and advance computing together. As a security analyst, you'll discover that Linux is used at different organizations. More specifically, Linux is used in many security programs. Another unique feature about Linux is the different distributions or varieties that have been developed. Because of the large community contribution, there are over 600 distributions of Linux. Later, you'll learn more about distributions. Finally, let's take a look at how you would use Linux in an entry-level security position. As a security analyst, you'll use many tools and programs in everyday work. You might examine different types of logs to identify what's going on in a system. For example, you might find yourself looking at an error log when investigating an issue. Another place where you will use Linux is to verify access and authorization in an identity and access management system. In security, managing access is key in order to ensure a secure system. We'll take a closer look into access and authorization later. Finally, as an analyst, you might find yourself working with specific distributions designed for a particular task. For example, you might use a distribution that has a digital forensic tool to investigate what happened in an event alert. You might also use a distribution that's for pen testing and offensive security to look for vulnerabilities in the system. Distributions are created to fit the needs of their users. I hope you're excited to learn more about Linux. This will be a very useful skill in the security field. Let me start with a quick question that may seem unrelated to security. Do you have a favorite building? And what is it about its architecture that impresses you the most? The windows? The structure of the walls? Just like buildings, operating systems also have an architecture and are made up of discrete components that work together to form the whole. In this video, we're going to look at all the components that together make up Linux. The components of Linux include the user, applications, the shell, the file system hierarchy standard, the kernel, and the hardware. Don't worry, we'll go into these components one by one together. First, you're the user. The user is the person interacting with the computer. In Linux, you're the first element to the architecture of the operating system. You're initiating the tasks or commands that the OS is going to execute. Linux is a multi-user system. This means that more than one user can use the system's resources at the same time. The second element of the architecture is the applications within a system. An application is a program that performs a specific task, such as a word processor or a calculator. You might hear the word application and programs used interchangeably. As an example, one popular Linux application that we'll learn more about later is Nano. Nano is a text editor. This simple application helps you keep notes on the screen. Linux applications are commonly distributed through the package managers. We'll learn more about this process later. The next component in the architecture of Linux is the shell. 
This is an important element because it is how you will communicate with the system. The shell is a command line interpreter. It processes commands and outputs the results. This might sound familiar. Previously, we learned about the two types of user interfaces, the GUI and the CLI. You can think of the shell as a CLI. Another element of the architecture of Linux is the File System Hierarchy Standard, or FHS. It's the component of the Linux OS that organizes data. An easy way for you to think about the FHS is to think about it as a filing cabinet of data. The FHS is how data is stored in a system. It's a way to organize data so that it can be found when the data is accessed by the system. That brings us to the kernel. The kernel is a component of the Linux OS that manages processes and memory. The kernel communicates with the hardware to execute the commands sent by the shell. The kernel uses drivers to enable applications to execute tasks. The Linux kernel helps ensure that the system allocates resources more efficiently and makes the system work faster. Finally, the last component of the architecture is the hardware. Hardware refers to the physical components of a computer. You can compare this to software applications, which can be downloaded into a system. The hardware in your computer are things like the CPU, mouse, and keyboard. Congratulations! We've now covered the architecture of Linux. An understanding of these components will help you become increasingly familiar with Linux. Thank you.